Got me sparking and rushing mad like inside the dark. Call me no snatcher. Just a brother for the rapture. I hang lines, hold it on strong, hard to capture. Extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant. And I react like a con and start killing. It's manifesting. The guards work like appliances. Dealing in my sleep like a lot. Oh, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Norris to explain here, bring you guys another discussion for Boruto Norris Next Generations, the manga, and for anime only fans, this is the time of the month where a lot of the content that we talk about here on the channel is me spoiler heavy. So I thank you for your support. However, if you're still here, I'm assuming that you've already hit the like button because hitting the like button will absolutely get Sasuke no way, into chakra. Boy. So if you've ever complained about Sasuke being out of chakra, hit that like button. It costs you absolutely nothing, and one like equals one small dose of chakra for Sasuke and as we all know Sasuke is in dangerous need of chakra that way he can perform jutsu and not end up like Konohamaru so with that being said though if you're still here I'm assuming you're okay with speculative theory so let's get right into the actual discussion so getting right to it I want to talk to you guys about Sarda Uchiha and in particular Sarda awakening her Mangekyo Sharingan how it needs to happen what the benefit for it could actually be and why narratively this is something that will absolutely shake up the Boruto manga in a way that it desperately needs so getting into it I want to tell you guys first and foremost that I think that for Sarda Awaken her manga kills Sharingan it's going to go one of two ways so either number one you can continue the pattern of Sarda advancing her Sharingan just based on the fact that she's feeling a heightened sense of love so as a small child when Sakura was taking care of her it's confirmed in the Boruto anime I believe in Boruto episode 18 that when Sakura's in the hospital, she has the flashback and she says that Sarda has Sharingan ever since she had that fever when she was worrying about her father and she wanted to see her father and that's when she awakened that Sharingan and after then she had to start wearing glasses. Well, we then saw Sarda's Sharingan further evolve based off of love when it came to her love for Boruto as a comrade, her Sharingan evolved in order to protect him. And then in the Boruto manga, she has a three Tomo Sharingan. But when you go to the Sasuke Shinden, the Teacher Star Pupil novel, Sarda already had a three Tomo Sharingan during the events of that. And in particular, it gets revealed that her Sharingan has three Tomo in it when she's training right alongside Sasuke. And it comes from that joy of being in the presence of her father and having her father take a hands-on presence in her training so we've seen love be connected with her Sharingan and it's something that I said I feel like continuing that narrative for Mangekyo making her be the first person that doesn't awaken Mangekyo Sharingan out of the chemical imbalance that comes from losing a loved one so like when Itachi saw Shisui die his Mangekyo Sharingan immediately came into fruition Sasuke, once he came to grips with Itachi's step, Sasuke awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan. I feel like you can also recreate that chemical imbalance in Sarda's brain by having her feel that heightened sense of love. I always felt like that was something that could work. However, I think that we also have to look at it from the other perspective, which is the traditional route, which is saying that even though Sarda has gained her Sharingan one Tomo, all of the three Tomo, based off of love, the Mangekyo Sharingan is going to remain as something that is going to continually be awaken out of that loss of love and if that ends up being the case if that's throughout the Masashi Kishimoto chooses to go I won't necessarily be happy however what I will say is that from a narrative perspective it makes sense and it also means that Kishimoto isn't breaking the lore so I don't necessarily have a problem with that but what I will say is that there's only a short list of people that are going to impact Sarada to the extent where she's able to get the Mangekyo because you have to remember it takes a traumatic loss in order to awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. That's why you didn't have like 9,000 Uchiha during the Warring States era and during the first and the second Great Ninja War when the Uchiha clan fought in it. You didn't have 9,000 Uchiha who likely saw their comrades dying all around them running around with Mangekyo Sharingan. It's already a small number of Uchiha who have the potential to awaken it, but it also comes from a really, really heart-wrenching loss. And so for Sarda, that list would be some like her close friend in Chocho, which I know there's probably somebody that's like, yo, go ahead and kill Chocho off. Great character development for. It would have to be somebody like Konohamaru, which that falls in the same category. A lot of people don't like Konohamaru, so send Konohamaru off to the wolves, let him get killed. 
and Konohamaru's legacy will be Awakening Sardis, Mangekyo Sharingan. And then that's when you start getting into what's really gonna hurt. People on Team 7, so Mitsuki, Boruto, one of them dying, Awakening her Mangekyo Sharingan. That is something that would kind of really hurt, but then you start getting into Naruto, who Sarda has deep feelings for, and really looks up to somebody that she said in Boruto episode 205 that there are times where she wondered what her life would have been like if Naruto would have been her father which if you're curious about that you should check out my video what if Naruto married Sakura here on Naruto Explained which is to date still my biggest video on the channel's cheap plug but then you get into her parents which are Sasuke and Sakura and so with the character Sasuke Sasuke's been on Death Watch for a while and I guess you could use Sasuke as a catalyst for not only Boruto's character development, but also Sarda's character development at the same time where Sasuke's death motivates Boruto and makes him truly understand what it means to be a shadow Hokage. And then with the character of Sarda, it's one of those things where Sarda is deeply impacted by it. She understands everything that her father's been through. And then that ends up making her awaken that Mangekyo Sharingan and because Sasuke's dead you could see an immediate upgrade where she takes Sasuke's Sharingan eye out of his body and gets the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan in one eye potentially maybe even two since there are some people that have the rule of thought that like Sasuke right now has both of his Sharingan abilities concentrated in one eye so there is the possibility just swapping out one of them allows for a situation where she awakens the eternal Mangekyo Gekyo Sharingan in both eyes. I think that either way you decide to go with that, I think it's fine. My candidate for having Sardo awaken on my Gekyo Sharingan is Sakura, and I'll explain to you why. So from a narrative perspective, the reason why I really love it is that Sakura was right there when Sarda awakened her one Tomo Sharingan when she was a small child before she even went to the academy and didn't even realize that she had Sharingan. Sakura was right there. Sakura also participated in Sarda going through her training to help her get to a point where she could unlock a two Tomo. While Sakura wasn't there for her when she awakened the two Tomo, she played a role in getting Sarda up to that point. And we know based off of the Naruto Shinden novel and the Sasuke Shinden novel, the teacher star people that Sarda had done some training with Sakura so it's one of those things where each step of the way Sakura has kind of played a role in her development and when we first get introduced to Sarda in Naruto chapter 700 there's a close relationship between mother and child there and when you transition over to Naruto Gaiden one of the things that you end up seeing with that character of Sarda and that version of the story is she has that moment where she's not sure if Sakura's her mother but then she comes at deep love and understanding of everything her mother's been through having Sakura's story in in the same way that we really got introduced to the Sakura and Sarda dynamic and Naruto Guide, and I feel like that's very poetic. That's a very nice bookend for their relationship. I personally feel that also having Sakura get killed off is if you go into this time skip or when the time skip takes place and we see teenage boards or teenage Sarda and etc. If you have a situation where Naruto sealed away, where Sasuke is potentially dead, and then you also kill off Sakura, the reason why that hits home so hard is all the core members of Team 7, they're all gone. Now, from a narrative perspective, the way that also works is Team 7 was also in a situation where they mirrored the legendary signing and then they mirrored the generation before them and that generation before them being Team Minato but essentially the legendary signing you had these legendary shinobi and then Tsunade for a long time ended up being the only surviving member Orochimaru was revived through a little bit of an ass pull with the curse mark but that's another video for another day but essentially for a long time it was just one member alive now you could say that that just means that only one member of team seven dies and i would say sure but also you have to remember that this team seven also members team minato and in team minato two out of three members die and so i think that you could kind of play with it like this and i do believe that if you kill off sakura she has to get that same treatment that karama got in the anime where it's a sacrifice that pays respect to the character and that's something that kishimoto did say he said that no character from 
the old generation was safe. And the way that we've heard people like Kodachi and Ikimoto talk when it comes to the older generation characters, when it's a character defining moment, usually there's a meeting on it. And I don't believe that Kishimoto would allow for a character to be killed off, like say how we had Kurama killed. I don't think you would see a situation where Naruto and Sasuke end up getting killed off or Sakura they end up dying and you don't see it be with a noble sacrifice. Like with Kurama, he gave his life in order to protect Naruto. So if Sakura died, her giving her life in order to protect the village or in order to push the agenda forward for her daughter or potentially for Sasuke or Boruto, something that is true for her character. I think that if it's done correctly, it's a heartbreaking death. And Justice Kurama, when that got animated into the anime, just as that was trending worldwide, you could also have that same thing for Sakura. So I'm very curious to see how this might actually unfold. And I wanna know from you guys, on a scale from one to 10, how big of an impact do you personally believe that Sakura dying could have on Sara as a character? Let me know down in the comment section below, but as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Have an awesome day, guys.